66 books in the Bible. 39 in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. You'd think with a book like that, I remember when I first was called to preach, my fear was that I was going to run out of something to say. I said, man, you've only you got 52 weeks a year, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and I've only got 66 books to pick from, and i got to say something every single Sunday morning, Sunday night, twice on Sunday, and Wednesday night, and then just a constant preparation. But let me tell you, the Bible is an artesian well of truth. Uh, and uh, it's a fresh and a new every morning. It's a good thing about God's Word, and I believe it was applicable when he said, don't gather up that manna and store it. It'll get worms in it. He said, I'll give you what you need every day. And when we pray in the model prayer, he said to give us this day our daily bread. I believe we need the Bible and a fresh and a new, and we need it all the time. It can't just be a fix on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You need it on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, our daily bread. And Jesus, no doubt, is manna. This book is bread for us to grow by, and uh, we thank God for it. But after you've pastored somewhere 20 years in the same place, two or three things happen. Number one, you start going blind <laughs> after 20 years. Somebody say amen. And you start going deaf. And you get fat, and, uh, and y'all done heard all the illustrations. You understand that? And I'm well aware of that. Y'all have heard all my jokes. And some of you still have enough courtesy to laugh at them, and I appreciate that. I travel places, they haven't heard them. They, they, I, I'll be with Brother Vaughn, and he goes with me to meetings, and I tell him the same old stories, and Vaughn just sitting back, he, you know, uh, and they're all laughing, holding their sides. I'm saying, Vaughn, get in on it, man. <laughs> but he knows where. Miss Geraldine, those heard them before. And I'll start telling them, Miss Geraldine, start laughing before I get to the punchline. <laughs> and she's heard the stories a thousand times. I watch her, she starts going, <laughs> <laughs> And if her youngest daughter's sitting with her, they both start on that bench. And they go to laughing before we get to the punchline. But y'all bear with me. I've learned that sermons that build a church, built past tense, will continue to build a church. And there's nothing new under the sun, and it is not my desire to impress you. I tell you that right now, I, I gave up on that. As a young preacher, I, I tried to have every message, and I still have a tendency, I want it high, every message. But I remember when I first started preaching, Brother Adam, I want everything to be camp meeting, every service. But you can't live on a mountaintop. Uh, you grow more when you're in a valley sometime, and not that you have to have dead preaching to grow, but not everything's going to be camp meeting experience. Uh, you got to have meat. You got to have more than just milk and glory. I've got some preacher friends. They specialize in glory. It opens a lot of doors for them. And I mean, they're embraced well by the brethren because they're not going to say one thing negative. They're never going to preach against sin. It's always happy, happy, heaven, heaven. Amen. It's always some great doctrinal truth, uh, but there's more to the Christian life than doctrine. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 he said, laying aside therefore the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Well, there's more to it than just reviewing the happy things of Scripture. There are practical truths that we learn from the Bible that help us every day. And I'm going to embark once again, I think my second time that I've preached through the miracles and ministry of Elijah and Elisha. I would have to say that as I've studied the Old Testament, y'all still with me? That Elijah and Elisha are two of the outstanding characters of the Old Testament. A lot of great men, a lot of great examples to follow, a lot of things not to do. I've learned that I can learn from everybody's life. I can learn some things and some people what to do, and I can learn what not to do. But you can learn from everybody's life. A wise man learns from his own mistakes, but a wiser man learns from others' mistakes. If I can learn from another's mistake and save me some disappointment, uh, that's a great blessing. And we study these Old Testament characters, good men, many of them good men. I spoke of Ahab this morning, uh, uh, the opposite of a good man, uh, a bad man, but what lessons we could learn from all of the characters of the Bible. 
Elijah and Elisha, great men of God. As I look at them, I, I, I mentally picture them. Do you ever do that when you read about somebody in the Bible? I picture John the Baptist, he's eating wild locusts and honey. And he's girded with a leather girdle. And I mean, I just see some kind of a, you know, I see like a mountain man. Daniel Boone looking something. Preaching the gospel in the wilderness. And I envision these Old Testament prophets as no doubt strong men of God. They took a stand, now listen to me closely, their ministry was during a great time of apostasy. The nation of Israel had plummeted into polytheism, multiple gods. They were, uh, they were pagan in many of their practices, offered their own children as sacrifices, human sacrifices, godless worship. I'm talking about awful, sinful, distant from the God of the Bible worship, man-made, manipulated worship of Baal and the groves, these totem poles, carved gods of the high places. But these two men were raised up for such a time as that. We need men like that in this generation. I begin reading in chapter 17 and verse 1, the Bible said, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall be not dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Our Heavenly Father, we're excited tonight once again to, to look into these familiar texts, these stories of great men of old, these truly applicable stories that would help us to be stronger believers. I pray for everyone here. There may be some here unsaved and never been born again by the good grace of God. We would ask the Holy Ghost to do his part, help us to do our part in preaching. And I pray that you'd honor your word and let souls be saved if they're unsaved. For those who've been saved by the grace of God, they know the free pardon of sin, but have become distant and cold. I pray for revival. For those tonight who are in the way of service and they need refreshment, I pray that this message would do just that for them. Remind us and refresh us from your word. And just as that revelator wrote in the last book, strengthen the things that remain. And I write and pray as John wrote, God help us and strengthen the things that remain here at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. For we ask it in Jesus Christ's name, the name that's above every name, the name of peace and pardon. Amen and amen. And Elisha, Elijah the Tishbite. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now I want you to see the debut of Elijah, the great prophet. He steps on the scene of history, and I want you to get a real good picture of this. He has no credentials to hang on the wall. This is a man of Gilead. Uh, this was a, a less known tribe. This was a less popular people. You don't read a lot about them in the scripture. I mean, it's like people from Alabama. You know what I mean? You just don't read a lot about them in history. Say amen. But here, this man steps on to the scene. I'm talking about on the forefront of the nation of Israel's problems. And he said, I'm Elijah the Tishbite. He has no stamp of approval from a Bible college. As far as I know, he's not been laid on of hands of any prebistry. There's no men who've endorsed him. He steps up alone without a college behind him, without a congregation. He's not the pastor of a large church of those who have lined up with him. But from obscurity and from out of nowhere, God raised up Elijah, the great prophet, the Tishbite. You say, where in the world is Tish? Well, you'll have to look hard to find it. It took me a long time to find it. It's only twice in the Bible. I mean, it had to be like, somebody help me, Rockvale. 
I picture it like I always do. Y'all just bear with me. But I, I see it just like Helen Winrow's store at the crossroads, the post office across the street. Do y'all remember when it was like that? Gas pumps on the yellow line. Somebody help me. I'm talking about man right there. I can just see. There's Tish. You blink, buddy, and you missed it. Elijah the Tishbite. Who in the world is Elijah? But you know, it's God's way to, to use the, the, the weak things of the world to confound the mighty. And old Elijah steps on the scene. Can I say just three attributes about him that I believe we need in these last days? He was an available man. I'm going to tell you what God will use you when you'll make yourself available. I've heard it said the best ability is dependability, and I do believe in dependability. But God's not looking for dependable. He can make you dependable. He's looking for available men. Harold B. Seidler said God can draw a straight line with a crooked stick. He doesn't always call the fit, but he fits the call. And he can use you. You say, my past is marred. Well, God can use you with a marred past. Oh, my present is, is shady, and, and you don't know what all I've been through, but God can clean you up. And God wants to clean you up. And God wants to use you. You say, I have no great pedigree behind me. I have no one to endorse me. Hey, I'm just, I'm just like Elijah. Hey, I'm a nobody. Let me say God specializes in using nobodies. Amen. I'm a nobody telling everybody about somebody who can save anybody. That's what he was doing. He wanted to be used of God. He was an available man. My daddy, you know how it is in the house when your wife wants to move something. Mama's not here tonight, but she liked, she constantly at our house, we were always moving pictures. I mean, man, you'd have pictures in like two weeks, she'd move the furniture. Yeah. I'd go coon hunting in the middle of the night, come back and walk in, flip over a couch. <laughs> Thought I went into the wrong house. Yeah. Well, we moved the couch, move everything around, turn it around sideways. Yeah. I'll never forget my daddy one particular day, and I'll never forget as long as I live. I've seen him so often use what He's hanging a picture. And he said, here? And she said, no, over. And he said, over here? And she said, no, over. He said, right here? She said, yell yeah, down a little bit. He said, right here? She said, yeah, right there. He said, are you sure? Can I get a witness? <laughs> yeah, are you positive? Right there. She said, yeah. He, he reached, he had to attack, and he's looking for the hammer, but it was too far to reach. He reached down and kicked off his shoe. <laughs> Amen. And he grabbed that shoe and he said, and he drove the nail with a shoe. I've seen him drive nail with Coca-Cola bottles. Yeah. Amen. I've seen him use a wrench for a nail. Yeah. He had to use oftentimes what was available to get the job done. Yeah. You say, why would God pick out such a man? Why would God use such an Elijah, somebody unknown, somebody unlearned, somebody with no past, previous uh, uh, ministry? Why would God choose in his sovereignty? Because he knew that he was a man he could use. When you make yourself available, God will start using you. I just don't know why God won't use Well, you. You, you, you done got too hard to get. You playing too hard to get. Amen. Let me help some of you single men in here coming to church and ain't married yet. You might as well quit playing so hard to get. God help. You need to be available. Amen. When she, if she wants to go out, just say yes. Don't check your date book. We're too busy with our preconce. We got our plans made for our lives. See why God won't use a lot of us because we've already told God how we're going to be used and when we're going to be used. Amen. We done told God what we're going to do. We've already got it all typed out. We got it, we got it pre-charted. We've got it all mapped out for God. Now, God, if you'll use me like this, if you'll let me do this, I'll serve you. If you'll allow me to have this, I'll serve you. If you'll let, I heard one preacher down in the Atlanta area. Y'all know Stone Mountain, Georgia, the big rock down there, a big piece of granite. 
It's visible from just about everywhere in DeKalb County, Georgia. I'll never forget, he, he surrendered his life to preach, and he said, Lord, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll stay as long as you want me to stay, as long as I can see Stone Mountain from my front porch. Well, that's not an available vessel. As long as we have comfort, we'll serve him. But this man was available through discomfort. Listen to me. As long as we have company, we'll serve him. But Elijah serves him by himself by the brook chair. As long as we have consolation, if we can in this life, you know, get something out of it in this life. Let me tell you, we're not living for this life. The reason God can't use a lot of us because we're only living for this life. But if in this life only we have hope. Uh, the Bible said we're of all men uh, most miserable. Hey, I'm not living for here. I'm living for over yonder. I believe Elijah was a man who was an available man. Amen. Elijah the Tishbite. Availability. Availability is hindering many of us from being servants of God. Will you make yourself available? Then I got to thinking about this great man of God. I believe the scripture indicates about him. The Bible said he was a man of the Tishbites. He was an inhabitant of Gilead. And the Lord said, uh, and he said, the Lord God of Israel lived before whom I stand. I want to say he was a man of authority. In his approach, he did not approach in personal authority as if he was something. But in dealing with the ministry, he said, as the Lord God of Israel saith. Notice what he said, Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth. He didn't say, I'm basing my claim on me. Did you know, look up in here, I want to help you just a minute. We have authority. The Bible said, Acts 1-8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You know why he was a used man? Because he exercised his God-given authority. Hear me, understand. We're not to go out here and dominate people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some kind of abuse of power. But I'm talking about an access of power. Do y'all understand greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world? Do you understand that, 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 that God wants to use us and he has ordained us with power? The church itself, what sort of things are bound on this that ye bind will be bound on earth. What sort of things are loosed, I'll loose. Just the church itself has the power to make some decisions. Because God knew down the way there was going to come some decisions a church would have to make. Amen. There were some traditions and practices. There were some lifestyles that were going to be in, introduced to mankind that weren't written in the Scripture. But the church would have to come with the leadership of God and with authority and say, no, no, we're not having, there ain't going to be no shacked up stuff going on in here. Amen. Amen. Well, the Bible never said that you could have to be, she couldn't bear, join a church. The Bible never said about joining a church. Don't get upset, everybody okay? But there's an authority that's given to this body of believers. Amen. And I tell you when God will use people when they start tapping into the authority that's been given. We, we, we have a powerless Christianity. Some of you are run by habits. Some of you are controlled by sin. Sin has dominion over you. God can't use that kind of vessel. You have to exercise the God-given authority. Every one of us have power that's given to us. God has imparted power. And man, we can have an effective life. We can make a difference in our society. Are y'all listening to me? i tell you why God used him. Because he's a man who accessed authority. He tapped into a power bigger than himself. Greater things, this is what Jesus said to his disciples, Greater things shall ye do, because I go to my Father. That's in the King James. I didn't make that up. Jesus said it. Greater things shall ye do, before I go to my Father. I want to tell you something. We're not, we're, not near the, we're not near tapping the source of power we could have. 
And I'm not talking about running around there and casting out devils and a bunch of one leg short and the other make believe television props. I'm talking about real power. Power to influence people. Power to change. I'm talking about power to witness and to see lives changed. Amen. God is able to use the man. I believe this about him. He was aggressive. This was the first message that he ever preached. Now, mind you, he's got just a few words to announce. I don't know how he preached it, but this is what he said. Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, liveth before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. That's the last sermon he preached for three and a half years. But I tell you how he approached it. Now, Ahab, if it's all right and everything, now I don't want to offend you. We want to be politically correct. By the way, politically, politically correct makes me want to vomit. When's the last time y'all heard about global warming? That's the biggest bunch of lies out of hell I've ever heard in my life. It ain't ever been this cold in November. I left the house with a fire going. Somebody say amen. Winter don't start, man, about 20 more days. Somebody help me. Global warming. It's colder than it's ever been. Somebody help me. Record cold. That been people now, what do they call it? Climate change or something now. They're trying to rephrase everything to make it sound better. All of it's just straight out of hell. I just thought I'd throw that in. I tell you who God wants to use, somebody who will cut the chase. We don't have time in the last days. You understand, it was, it was, it was, very, it was very important. It was, it was of timing. It was, timing was of the essence that Ahab and Jezebel be dealt with. It was of the essence that somebody stood up and said, hey, you're wrong, Ahab, you're wrong. And God's going to punish you for it. There'll be no dew, there'll be no rain, judgment's coming. He announced judgment. I don't know why we have to tiptoe around like, like we're scared when God sends judgment. Wildfires in California is judgment. Tell them I said so. Tell him queers old bad brother Tony said so. Amen. 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 Tell Hollywood I said so. Amen. There's nothing clean about Hollywood. Amen. There's nothing that we ought to follow about Hollywood. Amen. God, help the church ought to set the trends, not Madonna, bless God. Say amen. amen. Britney Spears and all the rest of them honky-tonk wannabe, what is that, uh, boot scoop, what's his name, his daughter? <laughs> I tried hard, Brian. I just said, there ain't no way. I'm biting that hook. Hannah Montana. Ain't got enough clothes on to make a mosquito wrestling jacket. Say amen. It's amen, friend. You better be careful. You better be careful. I'm telling you, well, I think, hey, you just better be careful how much of that they put in their mind. It'll show up on them, bless God. Hey, it'll show up. Amen. Judgment of God, it ought, it ought, to, be, it ought to be aggressively. And I, no wonder people just wonder, why, is that right? You think that? What do you think AIDS is? A coincidence? You honestly think that's a coincidence? You honestly think all this chaos Tsunamis, ain't that what they call them? How come it only? How come the majority of them tidal waves hit Muslim nations? In the middle of the ocean, out there in the middle of the, just God, just so happened, just so happened, just coincidental. Now look up here, God's judgment. We need some people of God today who are unashamed. And a quick tiptoeing around and announce, hey, listen, God's showing up. God's showing up. God showed. Did I tell y'all years ago I flew into California? I flew into Long Beach. I've told it so many times, different places. If I've told it here, act like you hadn't heard it. 
I flew into Long Beach, California, and the preacher picked me up, and he said, you got time for me to show you something? I said, as long as we can go by in and out Burger for a while, before I get to my room. He said, we can work that out. We got in the car and drove, and he said, I'm going to take you down here. He said, you hadn't heard about this on CNN or Ted Turner. He said, I want you to see it. We drove, 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 drove down into an industrial area. A lot of big buildings where they, industrial area, big, big warehouses. Finally, we got down there in, several miles into that area, block after block down through there. And I could see that there was yellow tape and caution lights blinking and utility trucks and electrical trucks and the water people were there. And director, sheriff or policeman directed traffic. He said, do you see that? He said, won't let us go any further. But he said, do you see that building way through yonder? And you could see all the roofs of those buildings were uniformly built and just about the same height. But there was one that had just fallen down. It was, you know, evidently lower than the other building. And I said, yeah, I noticed that. He said, you didn't hear about it on CNN. He said, but we had a little tremor come through here. He said, we have them all the time. And said, that building right there was just swallowed up. It just fell. It sunk. Said, nothing else, much damage, a little bit. But said, that building was just absolutely, and he said, you don't know, but over 85% of the pornographic material that's printed in America comes out of that building right over there. He named over magazines I'd never even heard of that were porn magazines. He said, that's where they're printed. That's where they, they, they sell them. They ship them out of that building. Now, you say what you want to about it. I didn't hear about it. Did y'all hear about it on CNN? I didn't hear about it. You say what you want to, that's God's judgment. The judgment of God. It's not ironic that things happen. That's the hand of God so often that I hate to have to agree with that Jeremiah right on anything. Help me now. But you tell you say what you want to, 9-11 is God's judgment Amen. on a nation. That have turned their back on God and mocked God. It's consistent with the scripture. God's used the enemies of his people all the way through the Bible to get their attention, and he used the enemies of our people of his people again to get their attention. But a little little old soft spoken, little old mealy mouth, men of God today, where well, we just don't we don't know for sure what well, we do too. Read them and weep. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. He was a man with a, a, an aggressive spirit about him. I believe God wants to use that kind. Did you know we're nearing the end of this thing? If we're going to do anything for God, we better start doing it now. If I still got y'all tuned in, here was a man, his debut. Now, I'm going to give you a point tonight, and, and we'll go home. It's hard preaching barefoot. I'm going to have to put these shoes back on. Look at verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. May I say, I'm not going to preach on it. Verse 3, but it's a good thought. Before he could show himself at Carmel, he had to hide himself by Cherith. God's not going to use many of us till we do some hiding. Hiding in the pages of God's Word. Hiding in the prayer closet. Hiding on our knees. A lot of us want to do that, don't want to do that showing, but we ain't doing no hiding. He said, you hide yourself by sheriff, then I can show you up there at Mount Carmel. He said, hide thyself, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. And so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook sheriff that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now, I want you to see several things tonight, and I'm going to hurry up. First of all, I want you to notice it was a brook, this brook, jot, jot this down, it was a brook of self-preparation. There's some things in the Christian life that Brother Tony cannot do for you. There's something in the Christian life that parents can't do for children. There's some things in a Christian life that a good godly husband can't do for a wife. And a good godly wife can't do for a husband. 
There's some things that a spiritual friend can't do for another spiritual friend. There's some things that only you by yourself will ever learn. Amen. And God knew if there was going to be a caramel experience, it'd have to be a brook, a cherub experience. God knew if there's ever going to be fire fall in chapter 18, there's going to have to be some knees fall and some tears fall and some time of trying over by that brook, trusting God. I want to say there's a brook right here, a brook of self-preparation. I'm going to tell you what we can learn from this man used of God. He let God do. He allowed God, and I want you to see there was a brook of placement. He put them by this brook chair, and then just not any brook would do. He said, you get down by the brook chair. And by the way, boy, I like that song that old Paul Williams sang, Stay by the Brook. I don't understand people leaving this brook if God's helping them. Amen. I like to stay by the brook, bless God. Stay by the brook. Here he is in preparation of being used effectively. And they, friend, he's going to be used effectively. Look up in here. Elijah is a household name among Bible readers. God raised a man up from nowhere, Tishware, to be a household name among Bible readers. From nowhere, God said, but do you have to go by a brook first? Some of you right now are having a hard time with the placement where God's put you. An unlikely place. An unpopular place. There's not a crowd at this brook. An unpleasant place. Can you imagine, I mean, of all things, I mean, I I, I watch birds. I'm I'm not a bird watcher, but I mean, I'm a bird shooter. (laughs) A bird killer and a bird eater. Amen. Amen. But some of the nastiest birds I know are ravens. They hang around trash dumps. You find crows, they're hanging around a trash dump. I mean, and they're picking in trash. You go up there to drive by Trash Mountain out here and you'll find ravens. They'll be up there. They like it. This is what he said. You go down there and a raven's going to feed you. Some of y'all are so picky. If it's sitting in the refrigerator overnight, you can't eat it. What if, what if you had to get an old biscuit? I can see that raven up there by Hardy's. <laughs> they done threw out all them old biscuits. Got one biscuit, somebody done took two bites out of them, then put the wax paper on and throwed it over. And that raven reached over and picked up a biscuit. And he's flying over Brook Chair. And, and, and I, I can see Elijah. I wonder what's coming this morning. Going to have meat. Going to have water from the brook and meat from the ravens. I wonder. And as that old raven drops by, he just lets go of that wax paper. And here comes down like a parachute, a greasy, hardy biscuit. And boy, he's excited till he opens up the wax paper and finds two bites out the side of that thing. I'm going to tell you what you'll learn to do if you're ever going to be used of God. You'll have to learn to accept his provision. You're going to have to learn to quit being so picky with God. Amen. Well, now, what I want, I want Rudy's farm sausage. Well, you, you ain't ever had no Tennessee pride then. Amen. And I want mine, I want, I, want, I want whole wheat. Don't use lard in my biscuits. I, I want uh, Crisco. Because I'm on a health food diet. You'd starve to death down there at Sheriff. Questioning what God sent. There's a religious crowd who couldn't have handled it if it had been a sausage biscuit. I mean, if it was pork, they couldn't have handled it. You know, President Obama, he'd had a hard time, you know. He said that was a Christian thing, not eating pork. Shows how much he knows about Christianity. That's a Muslim thing. Amen. It's a Muslim thing. Hey, that Acts 10, 13 is in there, kill and eat, bless God. And it's my favorite verse. (laughs) Kill it and grill it. Amen, hallelujah. You would have turned your nose up at the provision, and you would have still been by the brook. You got to learn to eat cold biscuits. 
You got to learn to look up in here, put a little more water in the soup. He didn't, go, he didn't say go stay in a five-star motel. I'll give you five-course dinners every night. You'll have waiters on every and said, I'll have a raven bring you some meat. Amen. Some roadkill. Ravens don't go kill deer. You understand, they don't have a pea shooter or a bow and arrow either one. They bring in what somebody done killed. They bring in the leftovers. Unlikely. 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 Unpleasant. But it was the right place. You know what some of you need to do? You need to dig in where God's got you right now in life. Man, quit wishing for bigger and better things. Just, just dig in right there by the brook where God's got you. And what he provides, be thankful for it. He don't have to bring the biscuit. He don't have to bring that stale bread. He don't have to bring, he don't have to bring, he don't have to bring the leftovers. But you'll be thankful when he comes by and meets a need in your life. I tell you what you're getting ready to do when you get that attitude, you're getting ready to step up and be used of God. Hey man, right there. This placement. Can I hardly say it was promptness? Two words I want you to see over there in the third chapter. Or chapter, third verse, I think it is. About, let me see where my verse is. Verse 5, two words. Went and did. Went and, let's, you know, let's, what they say on television, touch your neighbor. All them bunch of cares about it. Y'all touch your neighbor and say went and did. Everybody touch your neighbor and say went and did. We'll act like we're on television. <laughs> Somebody touch your neighbor and say, Wendy. <laughs> hey, guess what he did? He went. You're not getting any closer to being used of God until you go and do. Right. There was a promise. I don't see where he picked up a phone and called his friend, his Southern Baptist liberal friend. Man, my preacher preaches against things all the time. He preaches against stuff you wear and everything. What does your preacher preach on? My preacher pre says King James only. What does your preacher say about the Bible? My preacher preaches about old time music. He don't even like contemporary. What, did you, what does your preacher think? There was no consulting before he went. Some of you make bad mistakes before you go, you want to consult with the world. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, what do y'all think? Be careful what you get at the beauty shop. Amen. What, ain't no man going to tell me, ain't none yet. That's why you've been married six times to shacking. Hey, man. There's a danger in who you, you, you teenage, you better listen, Brother Tony. It, it, it ain't go check out what everybody's doing and then go. It's at the word of the Lord he went and did. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you when you get ready to be used of God, when you start answering. And maybe, write down this one right here. This will help you. Delayed obedience is not obedience. I can't imagine my daddy coming to the house or my mama telling me and my daddy in present and saying, son, my mama saying, son, run out there and take the trash out right quick. It's about to run over. I can't imagine saying, I will in a minute. <laughs> now I can imagine telling Tracy that. Somebody help me, I'm the head of my home. I'll take out the trash just when I get good and ready. When she tells me to, amen? <laughs> it's usually when she tells me I'm real good and ready. I can't imagine sitting on the, sitting on the couch and me responding to my mother. Well, let me watch the rest of this game first. Honest to God, I would have woke up if my daddy had been in the room. I'd have woke up in the hospital with pipes down my throat. Y'all, let me understand me. With, when I'd have, I'd have oxygen on me. I'd have IVs going in my body, and I'd be in the intensive care unit. If I'd have asked, if I'd have, if I'd have said, about, I, I can't. I've got to finish watching this program." But God commands us a greater Father. 
a greater authority uh, commands us to go to the brook Cherif, and what do we do? Well, we will in a little bit. We just put off and put off. And all you're doing is putting off your effectiveness. Putting off God wanting to use you. I'm going to tell you, there's no greater joy than to be picked for God's team. Right. Some of y'all might not remember when you didn't get picked for the team. I mean, it was a sad day when they picked the team and they left you out. I'm going to tell you, God wants to use you, but you're going to have to go to the brook chair. Yeah. He went and did. Mm-hmm. Promptness. Look up in here. As difficult as it may seem, you'll always be right when you obey the commands of God. As hard as it may seem. As lonely as you may be. It'll pay off in the long run. Well, nobody else dresses like this. Nobody else does. Nobody else ties. Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody. Hey, hey, it pays off in the long run. Get by the brook. He went and he did. He went and did. There's a promise. But the Bible said, and it came to pass. I want to praise God that this experience is not there forever. It's a passing experience. If you can learn your lessons, God will, God will elevate you. He'll educate you to the next level. And it came to pass that the brook dried up. Now, may I, jot, may you, I want you to jot something down right there. Your dried brook can be another person's divine blessing. If it hadn't been for a dried brook, there would have been a widow and a son down at Zarephath that would have died of starvation. So look up in here. Don't cuss your dried brooks. I didn't know. God may be be stirring. God may be directing so that you can be effective in helping some others. Amen to that. I know y'all going to sleep on me and y'all tired and y'all done heard it 90 times, but I'm enjoying myself. And it's helping me just to hear it. I I got to have it. A man, a preacher needs preached too. It's so easy to enjoy those mountaintop experiences. Now, after a while, don't you know, it got pretty good. I mean, day after day, you see in God fulfill His promise. Yeah. And let me say, cold biscuits ain't all that bad. Amen. Can I get a witness? You can leave sausage sitting out. I don't care if, it, if the grease hardens. I can eat a sausage biscuit at lunch. Amen. It ain't got to be reheated. That's right. I'll eat sausage all day long. We cook that Canuck River sometime and leave what's left over in that, that link Canuck River sausage. Good night, it'll make a bulldog break his chain. <laughs> Tracy, I mean, she, she'll complain about something sitting out, but she'll eat that. I mean, I'll go back through, we got a pound of that sausage. Look at her right there. She got, you know it's right. We'll have it sit over. And I mean, I'm talking about she'll eat the whole thing. Just a piece at a time. When we done breakfast is over, she's walking by, she's getting a piece. It can be hard, cold, but you learn to like it. Yeah. What God, look, God will, God will teach you to like it. Yeah. Some people look down on beans and cornbread. Let me tell you something, man. You put a little ham in it, bless God. It, 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 hey, it, leaves, being, it leaves being poor folk food. That's a southern delicacy. Oh, yes. You put, you put a little hawk in that thing, bless God. Hey, it leaves being poor people food. You'll learn to like it, man. I, I like it. Amen. Yankees don't like grits. I like grits. I like grits. It, it ain't poor people's food. Hey, I like them. I'm trying to make a point. What God, you'll learn to like what you. I can imagine him sitting there saying, man, you sure you want me to leave this brook? Man, it's been pretty good down here. I've learned to like this. Yeah, and he said, I want you to go because you can't always stay right there. It's a lesson to be learned. Where you are, where you are tonight, you may be by that brook tonight. I hope to God, look up, if you're there, don't be jumping, don't be looking for a place to go. Be sitting there to God make, to God teaches you the lesson. I'm going to meet your need. I'm going to provide for you. And then you can go help somebody else. It was a passing, and it came to pass it when the brook dried up. Yeah. Passing thing. I've never got over some of those lessons that I've learned in my early ministry. Hadn't got over them, but I've got past them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. There's some things I don't want to get over, but I want to get past. The miracles of Elijah started with self-preparation. Tonight, I wonder how many are sitting here 
and there, there's a delay on your usefulness because you won't stay by the brook. There's a delay on your effectiveness because you hadn't learned that lesson yet that God wants you to learn. So many lessons there. We'll show them next week maybe before we give us time. The lessons that he did learn. There's some, there's some great lessons that he learned. You can count on God. That's one lesson. You got, God will always be there to meet your need. Let's stand together. Thank you for listening. The miracles and ministry of Elijah, great prophets of God. Elijah and Elisha, these two great men of God, what lessons we can learn. Our Heavenly Father, we ask you tonight to dismiss us with thy blessing. I pray for the people of Middle Tennessee Baptist Church tonight. Many of them are carrying burdens. Many of them right now are at a brook. They're at a crossroads in their life. They're at a learning experience in their Christian life. And I pray tonight that we would make up our minds. I pray for families. I pray for husbands. I pray for daddies. I pray for mamas, teenagers. That we'd make up our minds we're going to learn the lesson so we can be more effective in the days ahead. No doubt the hand of God was on Elijah, but he had never made it to Carmel had he not gone by Cherub. Help us to learn tonight, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with 15 people, and you're dismissed.